Hey there, and welcome to this complete course on exactly how to develop easily monetizable custom GPTs for the GPT store. Now, I want to start by pointing out exactly why this is a very important course for anybody that's developing a custom GPT and why this is sort of the stepping stone if you're trying to build an AI business at the moment. And secondly, I do want to point out one thing that I've realized across this entire custom GPT store experience is that the big companies tend to realize the opportunity to do this. But for some reason, developers are still on the backbone sort of saying, well, the GPT store is not necessarily directly monetizable and we're not entirely sure how we can do it and that is absolutely not true so if you can build a custom gpt at the moment that is really really good that solves a specific problem you can easily monetize that gpt and turn it into an entire business that is built around the audience that the gpt store attracts so the very first thing that we're going to talk about is exactly what's happening with this gpt store now you have to realize that the only people that have access to the gpt store are chat gpt plus or enterprise members these are people that have some very specific traits specifically they understand the importance of having good AI tools available to their work, all right? And secondly, they are ready to pay for it. So those are two really important properties for the kind of people that you're serving. One is that they really want the very best of AI tools available to their disposal because, well, ChatGPT is quite expensive and it's not significantly better nowadays, at least not anymore than, well, uh, Copilot or BAD. So they want ChatGPT strictly because they really want the very best of AI available to their service and they're ready to pay for it. And so these are the people that will visit visit the GPT store and have the potential of finding your custom GPT. So these are the right people to try and market these services to. Now, secondly, there's a lot of big companies in here, companies that already own other businesses that are building custom GPTs for the sake of making money from them. The very best example that I have here is Canva. So Canva's GPT here allows you to basically effortlessly design pretty much anything and come up with design ideas. Now, the really cool thing about the way this Canva GPT works is that once you're done designing something, it goes ahead and takes you straight to Canva. So I'm just going to say here that I'd like a summer design. And so now it's running a custom action where Canva in the background is actually designing my image for me. And then it goes ahead and sends it back to me. But I just want to point out exactly what happens once I get this image back. So over here, it says, feel free to choose one and customize it later on in Canva if you'd feel like. Now, the really cool thing is that the image displays right here inside of my ChatGPT interface. Then once I click on it, I'm taken straight to Canva. So we're now outside of ChatGPT. They've taken me into their environment where they can charge me for plus features and actually make money from their custom GPT. So like I said, this is something that really big companies have identified, but for some reason, the developer community is not yet fully sold on the chat GPT store. And so in this entire course, I'm going to teach you exactly how you can make custom GPTs that can easily be monetized and turned into something that makes you money. And then I'm going to show you exactly what you need to be able to do that. So step by step, we're going to turn your custom GPT, your idea that you have at the moment into something that you can develop and sell and make money from. So to do that, I want to point out the course layout first. Now, this is a sort of course breakdown that I'm still developing, but I wanted to start recording this as early as I can because I know people really need this sort of information. And this course has two parts. Now, both parts will have four videos each. And what you need to do is you need to watch one video by one video. Once you're done developing your custom GPT, you need to go through and watch each video one after the other in order and make sure that you follow the instructions within the video to help you customize your chat GPT into some thing that people are willing to pay for. And that's the focus of part one. So part one focuses on building a custom GPT that people are willing to pay for. I'm giving out clear secrets here on exactly how you can make people come back to your custom GPT day by day. And so once you apply these specific techniques, you'll be able to build a custom GPT that has people coming to it consistently. And then once you're done with that, then you can move on to part two. Now part two focuses on making money from your custom GPT. As you can see, I've not yet exactly written this out. I will write it out a lot later. But these ideas are laid out from fundamentals that I've gained over the past couple of months selling these custom GPT assistants to different clients. And by doing this, I've identified exactly what clients want from these services, what leads people to pay for these services, and exactly how you can present these services in a way that allows people to, well, be interested in paying for them to begin with. Now, I do want to point out one really, really important thing. You need to watch these videos one by one for every single custom GPT that you're building. I don't think there's anybody out there that's trying to build custom GPTs that's only building one. I highly highly advise people to build as many custom GPTs as you can and deploy pretty much all of them to see which one ends up working out and for every single custom GPT if you watch each one of these videos one by one and make the modifications that I suggest to your custom GPT it's guaranteed that you're gonna make a certain amount of money from the GPT and you're gonna be able to monetize it long before OpenAI actually opens the monetization secondly this part one focuses on people using your GPT more which means that even if you actually are charging money from it even when monetization starts it puts you in a better place 
to be able to earn from OpenAI's income out of your custom GPT. So let's go ahead and get started with the very first part that's going to focus on modifying your custom GPT so that people use it on a more regular basis. See you soon. All right, so welcome to part one. Now, hopefully by this time, you've already built your custom GPT. So you've already built all the functionality, all the prompting, everything for your custom GPT to perform the specific task that you want it to perform. You need to be able to have them consistently visit your custom GPT. And as they consistently visit and use your custom GPT on regular usage, you prompt them with the option to go ahead and buy whatever product you're trying to sell or pay for whatever you're trying to get them to pay for. And it's only via this repeated prompting, consistently reminding them, hey, there's a premium version. Hey, there's a premium version. Hey, there's a premium version. By consistently repeating that to the customers, only by doing that can you ensure that they eventually decide to buy your product. So let's go ahead and find out how you can separate your custom GPT from everybody else's GPT and ensure that your GPT gets the most amount of uses on a regular basis from a specific group of people. Now, there's only one way to do this, right? And you need to ensure that you solve a problem that needs to be solved on a regular basis. Now, this is really, really important because if you solve a specific problem that somebody needs to be solved either two or three times a day or once a day, it's a lot better than solving a problem that somebody only needs to solve once. The easiest example that I can give you here is all these PDF GPTs that are on the store at the moment. Now, I get it. Those people read PDFs, but it's very rare that you find somebody who regularly and consistently reads PDFs. The only people that you might be able to think maybe do that is maybe students or researchers. But even for those people, very often it's better for them to just manually read the PDF and manually highlight the important segments than it is to consistently use some sort of chat assistant to extract information from the PDF. So it's not a regular use for this sort of information. Now, it's really important that you create a GPT that will solve a daily problem. And there's a lot of people out there that solve daily problems like this. But the best way to actually find out what these problems could be is to just take a look at the GPTs that are already on the GPT store. So take a look at this image over here. This is a list of GPTs that are already on the GPT store. And I'd like you to go ahead and think to yourself, which ones of these GPTs will get regular usage from a specific group of people? And in this image, it's actually quite clear that the two GPTs that are going to get regular usage from the same group of people is this one, Grimo, and also Canva, right? Now, these GPTs are going to get regular usage, not just from anybody, but from a specific group of people. So Grimo is going to get regular usage from people that like its features. So Grimo is basically just an improved version of ChatGPT with better prompting. And then Canva is going to get regular usage from designers. I want to point out that it's not just about getting regular usage from random people. You want a very specific subset of people that have a very specific characteristic that consistently return to your GPT every single day to solve the problems that they have on a regular basis, a sort of recurring problem. Now, the rest of the GPTs on this list, like the PDF viewers and the logo creator and whatnot, they're great GPTs and they're going to get a lot of visits, but a lot of them are going to be one-time visits. So the next time that somebody comes back to this store, they're just going to come back looking for yet another PDF editor or something else, and they're not going to look for the one that they already used. It's not even likely that they're going to come back because looking into PDFs and extracting quick information from a PDF is not something that you can find any group of people that regularly do that. People who regularly look into PDFs want very detailed information from them. So it's a lot better, like I said, to just read through and manually highlight these things. So over here, I've created a list of people that tend to have a recurring problem that they tend to solve on a regular basis. So these examples are really good, although they're not the only examples. You'll need to figure out who your people are. And once you figure this out, you need to figure out exactly what problem they need to solve on a regular basis. But these examples are really good to get you started. So a good example here is freelance writers, right? The problem that they tend to have on a regular basis is overcoming writer's block and generating fresh content ideas daily. And you can imagine there's already a lot of freelance writers that are already using the ordinary version of ChatGPT to find fresh ideas every day. I'm a YouTuber and I do this on a regular basis. It's a really good way to come up with fresh ideas. So you can build a custom GPT for these people that they'll return to every single day because, well, unlike where they have to go to ChatGPT and manually type in the prompts and content that they want, it's your custom GPT that automatically gives them exactly what they want. And they also have other problems that you could solve. So sometimes they need quick and accurate proofreading and grammar checks to maintain high quality writing, managing a consistent writing style across various topics and formats. And then we have a few other examples here. Small business owners also have their own problems. Software developers have regular problems that they solve on a daily basis and fitness enthusiasts. So this is really one of the most popular ones is fitness apps. So fitness people have a goal, like for instance, to lose 30 pounds over the course of, well, two, three months, and they need to work on that goal every single day. So if you develop a GPT that allows them to do this, it means that 
they're gonna come back to your custom GPT every single day. Now, what you need to sort of ask yourself at this point is, does your custom GPT serve a specific group of people that have a specific problem that it solves for them every single day? It doesn't have to be just one problem. In a later section, I'm gonna talk about how it's good to build an end-to-end -end system. So it doesn't have to be just one problem. Like here where we have fitness people, you could solve all their problems, right? The important thing is, are you giving them a reason? Are you giving this one individual person that matches your desired criteria of customer or user? Are you giving them a reason to come back to your custom GPT every single day, right? If you are perfect, that's brilliant, yeah? Now, if you find that your custom GPT doesn't seem to be one that does that, it's possible that there are some modifications that you can make. So you just need to get a piece of paper, write down, brainstorm for a little bit, and try to figure out what changes you can make to make your custom GPT something that people will come back on a regular basis. Again, if you can't seem to figure it out, I'm going to include steps later on in this course that will show you exactly what you need to do. So don't worry too much about that. But at this point, it's really, really important to know that your future development of your custom GPT needs to focus around solving a single recurring problem for a specific group of people. It doesn't need to be just one. It can be three or four problems. The important thing is that there's at least one of them, at least one that recurs every single day. So something that they need to come back to your custom GPT for every single day. So go ahead and look into that before you move on to the next video. Write down the specific group of people that you think you're serving and write down that one single problem that you feel like they'll come back to your GPT to try and solve every single day at the very least. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at what you need to do in the next part. Again, if you need to make modifications to your custom GPT at this moment, if your idea has changed, go ahead and make those changes because the closer you align with the definition of the product that I'm giving you, the better it is going to be for you. Let's go ahead and move on to the next video in this course. All right, welcome back. Now, in the previous video, I talked about solving a specific recurring problem for a specific group of people. Perfect. Now that you've solved that specific problem, there's a lot more that you can do to help you with providing a much better service to them. And following the steps in this part, you'll be able to identify exactly what other problems you can solve for these people that can't be solved by a custom GPT. And so you can get these solutions to these problems and put them on an external system and you can charge your customers for those external systems. So this video is really, really important as far as providing a custom GPT that can be monetized because it allows you to identify what additional services you can provide around your custom GPT that you can monetize and charge your customers for. Let's go ahead and get started. So the second requirement for building a custom GPT that can be monetized is that you need to build an end-to-end -end solution to a problem. Not just a solution to a task, a simple task within a bigger job. You need to provide an end-to-end -end solution for the entire job. And I'm going to go ahead and explain this and you'll understand it a lot better as I go forward. Now, a lot of custom GPTs on the GPT store are simply going to be assistants that help solve one specific task within a specific pipeline of tasks that allows the user to do a job. What I'm trying to say is, for instance, think about a writer, a newspaper writer. He will have a whole list of tasks that he needs to do before the article is finished. All right. One of those tasks might be doing a little bit of research on documents that might be PDFs. And so because of that, you see some custom GPTs like these ones. Ask your PDF research assistant. All right. This PDF helps the writer with one specific task in an entire pipeline of tasks that they need to work on. And it is not sufficient to help him with anything else. So while it is going to help him ask his PDF, it's not going to help him proofread his work. It's not going to help him find interesting topics that he might need to be able to write about on that specific day. It's not going to help him present his written documents to certain publishers that might help him publish content if his content turns out to be good enough. There's a whole list of things that he needs to do and this custom GPT is simply solving one specific problem around it. And that's not bad. Here's what needs to happen. You need to build a custom GPT that solves a given list of tasks within a specific job, all right? And then you need to build additional solutions that are outside of the GPT that can't fit into the GPT, all right? What this means is that the users that come to your custom GPT are going to be compelled to change their entire pipeline. So to change everything that they do every single day to fit around your custom GPT. Imagine a custom GPT solution suite. That's what I prefer to call it, a sort of custom GPT solution suite, where the entire suite allows you to change the entire system that you used to use while writing articles for a newspaper. So it allows you to change your topic research, so finding good topics to write about. It allows you to change your language, the way you want to write your specific articles within the newspaper. And it allows you to change how you 
proofread your work so your editing tasks it allows you to change that as well it allows you to change how you do your research like these pdfs and this is an entire suite now when a newspaper writer lands on this suite what he's going to do is he's going to use every single tool in the suite all right he's going to use it today and realize wow it's a lot better right than his previous way of doing things and this is what ai is really meant to do it's meant to simplify these things now as he goes on day by day continuously using this improved technology he's going to develop a habit of using this technology where he's going to come back to it every single day to use your entire application suite and this is exactly what you need to do this is exactly what i mean when i say build an end-to-end -end solution to an entire problem or an entire job so you solve the entire problem of somebody's working out not just their meal planning or the entire problem of somebody's writing not just their research the entire problem of somebody's software development not just their debugging like everybody else does on this gpt store a really cool example here is this particular assistant which is a custom gpt that lives within your google docs now this assistant can be an external solution to a custom gpt for research right so once you're done with your research you can pull all the research that you've done into this docs assistant which will live within your google docs and to allow you to edit your google docs in addition to this you could develop a, another google docs tool over here that will help the user proofread through their document and now you can see how you're developing an entire suite of solutions to their problems so i'd like you to take a minute right now and write down the specific person who your custom gpt helps and write down exactly what job not task the job that they're trying to do then list out what additional solutions you can provide for them across their entire development journey all right so do that right now and keep that list handy as we move on to the next step all right now once again here i want to present canva which is a, a really good example for this sort of stuff and uh canva for me is the single most interesting gpt on the entire gpt store because it presents custom gpts and what enterprises actually think about it so this is a canva custom gpt that basically helps you well come up with designs i demonstrated this in the very first part of this course now you can imagine that once you're done coming up with your design canva is not just going to say oh well that's your design figure the rest out on your own right it's not just going to help you with a single task of a job it's going to continue to help you with the task so it's going to take you to canva help you with the entire design while you're in canva and then it's going to allow you to export your design in the specific format that you really want to do it in and so in that way canva is changing the entire process that designers follow this means that once a designer learns about the existence of this canva gpt for the very first time he's very likely to never continue designing things in photoshop or illustrator or anything else he's very likely to use this canva gpt from that time on and so that means that he will be a sort of repeating recurring customer for canva gpt which is really important like i talked about in the very first video now over here i've gone ahead and given an example to really really push this concept home i have a feeling that it's already quite clear but i'm going to try and make it really really clear with this example so you can imagine that you could build a youtube video creator gpt right it helps youtubers one thing that a youtube video creator gpt can probably do is it could probably come up with the description title and maybe thumbnail for a video and that's cool but once it comes up with a thumbnail idea it can't actually design the thumbnail using dali ai right so what it needs to do is it needs an external collection of tools like some sort of image editor that lives somewhere else it's on an external server or something like that it can send commands to that external server to go ahead and generate something to begin with and then it provides a link for the person from the custom gpt to take them directly to the image editing interface which is on a separate server and that's a really really important point because at that point you now have the capacity to charge the customer to be able to use this external tool you could either charge them to edit the image you could even charge them just to be able to view the image in an external image editor or you could charge them at the point where they export the image so that they can only export it in an hd format if they've gone ahead and paid for it which is something that canva does really really well and like i said what this does is it will change the entire pipeline that youtubers follow when coming up with videos so once a youtuber lands on your custom gpt they're never really gonna leave because there's nothing that's a lot better than your custom gpt your custom gpt does the maximum amount of work that's possible all right great so we've come to the end of this second requirement to be able to make profitable custom gpts so in the middle i asked you to go ahead and prepare a list of the additional functionality that you can provide around your custom gpt take a look at that list and figure out what parts of it are practical for you to develop right now it's not that difficult to develop an external server anymore you could use a replit for that or you could easily host it on DigitalOcean, which has very affordable hosting build out those tools you absolutely absolutely need those tools to exist to be able to get your users to pay for something that is outside of chat gpt right they already pay for chat gpt so they can't pay for your custom gpt inside of chat gpt if you provide something external at the end of the day customers are going to realize that the quality is worth it and they're going to be able to pay for it so figure out exactly what you can implement in that list that you wrote implement the 
minimum amount that you need to implement for now and then let's move on to the very next part once you've implemented those particular features all right once you've made sure that you've built your custom gpt to be used on a regular basis and you know that you've built an all-round solution that helps people change the way that they do their job or tasks every single day the next thing that we need to worry about is we need to break barriers while building our functionality now the idea behind this technique comes from two main things that you need to understand about almost all other gpts on the gpt store and when i say this i'm mainly referring to gpts that are built by ordinary developers and not enterprises because like i've said in the past enterprises pretty much seem to understand already how to make money from the gpt store it seems to be ordinary developers that don't really seem to understand this yet now pretty much all gpts on the gpt store are built with these two particular problems one is that they all pretty much offer no additional functionality that chat gpt didn't already have if somebody could just prompt it properly to do what they wanted to do so without any additional prompting yes chat gpt can't do what this custom gpt is doing but the only thing that the developer is adding is better prompting and then secondly whatever additional functionality they offer uses either free or very cheap external endpoints a good example for this is the weather endpoint that chat gpt gave as an example it's a free endpoint and of course you're gonna find numerous custom gpts that use free endpoints like that now understanding these two basic facts about pretty much all gpts on the gpt store is really important because once you understand them it allows you to achieve two main things with your custom gpt one users will always pick your custom gpt above all other competitors on the gpt store this is really really important because there's going to be a lot of gpts that do similar tasks with each other like we said a good example is pdf gpts there are so many of them they all do the same thing if you can build a gpt following this particular system even when it's a pdf gpt that has over a hundred competitors users will always pick it over all the other options that they could have and secondly once users start using your, the, your gpt they are very unlikely to leave it because they think that they would better be served by an alternative now i want to give you a few examples about the very first truth the fact that pretty much all gpts offer no additional functionality that chat gpt didn't have to begin with and the good example here is pdf gpts this is turning into an absolute crushing of these pdf gpts but i think it's well deserved so pretty much all pdf gpts don't add any additional functionality to chat gpt and that's because obviously chat gpt could already look at pdfs it could already extract information and now all they're doing is they're adding better prompting to allow them to improve the responses that you get and apparently there seems to be no problem with this right you get better answers the developer gets to publish their gpt and spend no money on it except there is one massive problem with this technique and that's the fact that the developer doesn't get paid for developing their gpt it's like they've literally just developed it for free and everybody gets to use it for free they earn nothing from it because they're not doing anything new that chat gpt couldn't do already and so this brings us to an understanding of the fact that when you're creating your custom gpt you need to do what would so-called breaking barriers all right you need to build tools that are outside the typical functionality that chat gpt can already do when you build your custom gpt like this it gives your gpt what appears to be superpowers over the competition your gpt can now do things that people would typically think chat gpt couldn't do a really really good example of this is video gpt built by vid now the moment i saw this gpt i knew it was going to be something special but i also knew that they were going to charge you for whatever special thing they were going to do so of course we all know that chat gpt in its current state can't generate video right ai video is still an upcoming system and it's just being developed now vid already has a solution for this where they use stock footage and they use intelligent algorithms to combine them so they build video gpt right it's a basically a gpt assistant that you talk to it comes up with a script gives you ideas on exactly how to make compelling video scripts and then they go ahead and build the video for you and give you this option over here so i have this open in my tab this option over here to go ahead and play the video that they've generated for you and i think you can already imagine exactly what's going to happen once i click on this video right they take me straight into the vid interface all right the video is generated for me all i have to do is look through it figure out if i like it add some additional things maybe text maybe subtitles whatever doesn't matter right at the end of the day for me to download the video in the resolution that i like it in i need to upgrade right i need to pay them this much for this it's quite interesting to ponder on how much vid has probably made from people that discovered video gpt right the moment you find a gpt called video gpt you're almost immediately shocked because you're like wow i didn't think gpts could do this already but they're not doing it it's not actually the gpt doing it vid has an entire back end system that allows them to sort of have these superpowers over pretty much any other video gpt right and so this is exactly what i mean when i keep saying that enterprises seem to already understand how to monetize these gpts right now this is exactly what you need to do to 
make sure that you build your GPTs with these requirements, all right? Think about what it is that your custom GPT doesn't yet do, all right? And pick every single option, right, that it doesn't do simply because ChatGPT can't do it, all right? So is it maybe storing information in an external database, right? Storing information in a vectorized format. ChatGPT can't do that either. Keeping track of the user's information, connecting with multiple users across different endpoints. Figure it out. What is it that your custom GPT doesn't do simply because it's not a feature within ChatGPT and build an external system to do it, right? Now it's going to cost you more money. It is going to cost you more time, but guess what? People are going to pay you for it, all right? It's as simple as figure out exactly what it is that you could be doing that you're not doing. Build a system for it. So do it and then charge people money for it, all right? If you follow this process, you'll be able to build a custom GPT that does things that other GPTs can't do. You'll have a higher user retention. So users will stick with your GPT. Users will always pick your GPT over the competition. And then guess what? They will pay you for it. All right. So before we move on to the next step, figure out if there's some additional things you can do. Build external systems for it and build it out and then charge people money for it. All right. Now, in our last video, we discussed exactly what premium services you want to sell within your custom GPT. Now that we figure that out, we need to start to set up those premium services. This particular video will show you exactly how to set up external premium functionality within your custom GPT. Like we said in the past, this is functionality that your custom GPT can carry out. However, it requires external tools and services that you develop outside of your custom GPT to be able to run this type of functionality. And of course, you can charge your clients for this functionality because you run it on external tools and services. Let me go ahead and show you exactly what this experience looks like, and then we'll move on to actually setting this up. So what I have over here is a custom runner GPT. Now, like I said in one of my previous videos, these sorts of GPTs are too minimalistic in order to serve an entire role. But in this case, I'm just using a runner GPT, but in actual sense, you'd probably develop something like a weight loss GPT or an endurance GPT that helps people with the entire task that they're trying to carry out. But in any case, this is actually quite simple. So I just want to show you exactly how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, help me check my mileage. So I'm just asking you to check my mileage and then it's going to go ahead and say, of course, I could help you with that. Could you please tell me your username? Now, because it's checking the mileage within an external database, it needs to know my, my username and the username, as you're going to see, is actually a premium feature that somebody needs to pay for. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to enter a wrong username. I'm going to say maybe Adam. So I'm just going to send it that. And now it's calling an external action and passing in the username as Adam. And I'm going to go ahead and confirm. Now the user Adam doesn't actually exist. He doesn't actually have a premium account. So over here it says, it seems there was an issue retrieving the mileage information. The system indicates that the username Adam is not recognized. This might be because you need a premium account. If you already have a premium account, please double check that your username, blah, blah, blah. If you don't have a, pre a premium account, you can create one over here. So this is where you would direct people to an external website that actually has access to your database. Once they create a username using this particular link on that external website, literally by paying you for them to get access to a username, then you can go ahead and give them a username that they'll be able to use. In my particular case, this URL that I've linked is just the Google domain over here, but you can sort of get the idea of how you could make this your own website. People would enter their payment information, pay you for an account, and then you could give them a username. But in this case, I actually do have a username. So let me go ahead and let it know. So I've gone ahead and told it I've got a premium username and then I'm giving it an actual valid username. And now it's going to go ahead and use that username for this particular prompt. So over here, it's now running a new prompt and the username is now my new valid premium username. I'm going to go ahead and run the action and it successfully talks. So it says I've successfully retrieved your mileage information. As of now, your total running mileage stands at 60 miles. Keep up the good work, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go ahead and give it further instruction. And what I really want you to observe is that because of the large context of GPT-4, it can keep track of the username for a really, really long period of time. All right. That means that your user is not going to be inconvenienced by consistently having to enter their username. They could literally use this chat for two or three days and ChatGPT would never forget their username. Of course, when the username, so this particular message over here that sends the username, when that message grows out of context, ChatGPT will ask them once again for the username. But even in that process, GPT will be able to figure out the username within the current context of their conversation. So it's a really, really cool feature and it's not inconvenient at all for the user. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it add 30 miles to my mileage. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to do that. And what I want to point out once again, I just really want to stress this. You see that it has clearly picked out my username as Namsanga correctly, right? And you might think that it's actually doing it from this message over here, such that if this message grows out of context, it won't be able to figure out my username. That is absolutely not what it's doing. It's actually figuring out my username from the most recent message in which my username was used. So 
this particular message over here it has access to the entire record of this message and it figures out my username from this message this just means that your users will never have to enter their username in multiple times just because it's grown out of context the chat gpt will always be able to figure out the username and therefore the user only needs to sign in once so i'm gonna go ahead and confirm that it's going ahead and running the request and there it is so it says i've successfully added to your mileage now the mileage is 90 miles now i'm gonna go ahead and show you the back end for this particular system and then i will show you exactly how i've set up the custom gpt to be able to charge users like this now the back end runs in an external server like this now this server could be a python or javascript server doesn't matter in my particular case i'm using a javascript server so i'll show you exactly how this is set up so over here i have an endpoint which is the add mileage endpoint this is the endpoint that the gpt uses to set your mileage and as you can see over here it just requires that the mileage and username are included in the requests body now in case the username is not included it goes ahead and says well please enter your premium username to use this feature or buy a premium membership at this link over here for me like i said it's the google link this is where you would enter your premium site where you allow people to create new usernames and add them to your database this is where you'd enter that now the user could have added a username they may have added a wrong username that's not yet a premium account and you can go ahead and tell them here well the user is not found please enter your premium username using this particular link and they'll definitely be able to do that and so the same sort of setup follows for the get mileage again if you don't have a username it tells you to create one if it doesn't find your username it also asks you to go ahead and create one now let's take a look at exactly how you set this up within your custom gpt now setting this up within your custom gpt is ridiculously easy and it all starts with the actions so over here within the actions i've gone ahead and added this add mileage action it allows the gpt to save the mileage of the current user and then in the description i'm saying the username of the current user ask the user to tell you if you don't know it so this just makes sure that the gpt will ask the user for their username if they don't know it as you're going to see this is something that i stress not just within the actions but also within the system prompt that i give to this custom gpt and i do the same thing for the get mileage as well go ahead and save that now within the instructions i've gone ahead and said the gpt's primary role is to help users with running that's all cool the gpt uses external stores to be able to retrieve the user's information whenever it needs to save the user's mileage it uses the save mileage operation the operation requires the user's username and mileage now over here if unsure about the user's username ask them what it is depending on if the username is valid or not it will save the information or fail if it fails advise the user accordingly as they might need to create a premium account to get a valid username now i tried this quite a bit and it fails sometimes so down here at the bottom i went in and said please make sure to ask the user for their username if you don't know it before using the actions that require a username do not use the username as unknown instead ask the user for their username if you don't know it so that's exactly how you get this setup so that the custom gpt will never try to use a username like unknown and even if it does use unknown its next message will instruct the user on exactly how to proceed all right so i've shown you the entire setup but not only that within these lessons resources i've gone ahead and included this replit over here and you just need to modify it in order to make it into your endpoints for your particular system go ahead and set that up for any premium functionality that you want to leave within your custom gpt and then in the next video we're going to take a look at how you can market external products within your custom gpt all right so welcome back to gpt income mastery now once you've got your gpt matching all the requirements that we discussed earlier in the course meaning that it's a gpt that solves a regular problem so you're going to get regular users coming over to your gpt to use it you've built an end-to-end -end solution and you've broken the barriers for functionality your gpt is clearly superior to everybody else's then you have a very difficult decision to make you need to choose between either a premium subscription model that we discussed in the previous video or service marketing so it's quite difficult to choose but in this video i'm going to show you exactly what you need to consider when choosing between offering premium services in your custom gpt or using your custom gpt to market your own personal services and this is pretty much what i mean so personal services sort of involve you working one-on-one -on -one with the potential clients that you get from your custom gpt and so it's really really difficult to choose between this or service marketing right but in this video we'll sort of guide you through that uh, so that you have a very clear idea of exactly which one you want to choose at the end of the day and then at the end of the video i'll walk you through exactly how to set up service marketing within your custom gpt i'll give you a prompt that you can literally copy and paste into your custom gpt and then we'll sort of take a look at a demonstration of exactly how it works now it's quite interesting to consider that if you feel that you're not going to be getting too many people visiting your custom gpt you might want to consider going with service marketing because service marketing is really really profitable in that you only need a small number of customers or clients to be able to make a large amount of money so i'll give you an example here i have quite a few clients that uh sign
sign up for my premium resources. So in here, I showed that I make roughly $4,000 a month from these clients that sign up for my premium resources. However, I only have a few number of clients that sign up for my own one-to-one -one coaching calls. But the funny thing is I only need about 20 hours of one-to-one -one coaching to make $4,000, which takes me an entire month if I do it using the subscription system. So while I don't yet have that many clients signing up for my one-on-one -on -one coaching, it still doesn't change the fact that if I just had a few more clients, I'd be able to make significantly more money from the one-to-one -one coaching or one-on-one -on -one services that I provide than I make from my subscription services. So that's something that's really, really important to consider. So if you're not sure that you're going to have too many people signing up for your premium subscription services, maybe your premium subscription services are not that good. You just want to then switch over to a, a part where you're offering one-on-one -on -one services to your customers. Now, one other thing that's really, really important to consider with one-on-one -on -one coaching services is that this works with clients that are solving personal life problems a lot more. So one of the best examples that I can give you is dating advice. So people that have issues with their dating life or their marriage life or whatever it is, these are people that are solving massive, massive problems in their life. So either they are on a brink of divorce or they are afraid that they will never be able to find somebody that they love. And so these people are really, really good people to sign up with these one-on-one -on -one coaching services or these personal services. Another group of people that are really, really good to target with these services is people that are into fitness and uh, diet, that kind of stuff. And also people that are building their careers. If somebody just wants help with a PDF or something else that's really, really simple, like being able to create good YouTube videos, generally these are people that you'd rather sign up for a premium service, a premium subscription system. If they want help with really, really big problems in their lives, then it makes sense to sign them up with these personal coaching services. So that's all you really need to do. You need to take a look at your GPT, make your decision and pick between one of these two, because like I'm going to show you later on, you can't use both. So you need to pick between marketing your own personal services or marketing a subscription setup within your GPT. Once you've chosen marketing your own personal services, then we can proceed. Now I want to go ahead and show you a demonstration of this working with my own runner GPTs. So one of the questions that I've asked is how can I increase my mileage per hour using dieting? So it's going to go ahead and take a look at how it can help me out with this particular problem. And there you go. So once it's gone ahead and helped me out with everything that I need to be able to increase my mileage per hour, it then goes ahead and says, well, in addition to these tips, Runner Inc's one-on-one -on -one coaching can provide a more tailored approach for your running and dietary needs. For instance, if you're struggling with meal planning or finding the right balance of nutrients, a Runner Inc coach can work closely with you to develop a personalized diet plan that complements your running goals. They can offer you expert advice on nutrition, hydration, blah, blah, blah. With over 10 years of experience, then you can reach them at, and it puts the phone number here. So as you can see here, what's happening is that this custom GPT is basically acting as a sales rep. It learns exactly what the client needs. So exactly what they're looking for. So for instance, if you're struggling with meal planning or finding the right balance of nutrients and convinces them further and then gives them the number that they can reach me out. Of course, this could be a website. This could be anything, whichever pattern, whichever platform you want your customers to reach out to you on, you can sort of put this in here. But again, as you can see, it's a super effective technique because by the time the GPT lets the person know that they can contact you for one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's learned so, so much about them that it's definitely going to be able to convince them about the quality of your services to help them with their need. All right, perfect. So now that we've seen exactly how it works, here is the prompt. So I've gone ahead and labeled this service marketing over here. And then I've gone ahead and let it know that you will periodically market your company. So here you put your company and this is just letting it know exactly how to market your services. Now, I highly advise that you read through the center prompt and modify it just a little bit. If there's something that you need to change, there really can't be too much that you need to change. But all you really need to enter is your personal information, exactly how you want your clients to reach you. And then once you're done perfecting this prompt over here in your custom GPT, all you want to do is put this prompt right here. Just enter it at the end of your instructions so that the GPT takes it as priority and doesn't forget to market your services for you. And that is pretty much it. Now, what I want to stress finally, right at the end of this video is like I said, you should not be using personal service marketing at the same time with premium service offerings. Okay. So while you're offering premium services, like we talked about in the last video, you should offer any additional services outside of the GPT at a minor cost for every single month. Now, if you're using this premium personal service offering that where you offer your own personal services, you should take all the services that you initially offered at a paid price. Okay. And make them all free. This means that your GPT is superior to the competition. People will want to come back to it and you'll get recurring customers really, really often. And then this final advertising message at the end over here will convince your customers that your personal services are a lot better than the GPT and the GPT will let them know exactly how you can serve them personally and they'll go ahead and convert as actual clients. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to be trying to charge people twice. You don't want to be charging them a premium
premium subscription and then at the same time advertising your services because if you do that it sort of disorganizes your gpt and it makes the whole point of buying a premium subscription now now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here like usual if you have any questions or anything that you want to know about with this particular course go ahead and contact me in my private messages or on my discord and i'll be more than glad to help you out hopefully this video is super helpful to you and i will catch you in the next one peace out hey there and welcome back to gpt income mastery now in this third video we're going to talk about selling affiliated products to your clients to be able to get a commission whenever they use your custom gpt to either sign up for a product or buy a product online that kind of thing now in this video i'll walk you through whether your custom gpt is suitable for using this technique of making income like i've said in previous examples you can't combine this technique so you need to pick only one and just focus on one for your custom gpt i'll show you exactly how how to decide if this is the right technique for your custom gpt and then i'm going to show you exactly how to set this up so let's go ahead and get started now like we say here this custom gpt approach of selling affiliated products to your customers is strictly for a specific type of gpts particularly gpts that deal with selling products right helping the client to find the right product that he wants to buy helping him shop and that kind of stuff now in many cases you will find that your gpt is best suited for doing this if you have a specific niche but as you can see in this image i have a list of gpts on the gpt store that could use this technique and not all of them have a specific niche so ionic shopping bot nothing specific then over here we have coupon finder nothing specific but then you do have some really specific ones so you have outfit him which is good for finding outfits that you can use and that one is a niche specific bot it mainly deals with men's clothing so depending on which type of products your custom gpt sells you can go ahead and decide whether this is the better route for you to go now in addition to that if your custom gpt sells services that are for specific users now the best example that i can give here is for instance forex traders right forex traders buy services online so they might buy a subscription to a specific service and that kind of thing and these services typically offer a sign up bonus for referrals right so once again this is not necessarily the definition of affiliate marketing but it is yet another system where like affiliate marketing you can use a specific link to identify the fact that you've gone ahead and brought somebody to the service and the service will go ahead and pay your commission so if you're building or if you can think of a gpt of that sort you can go ahead and build it and try to apply this specific technique now like i've said you cannot apply affiliate marketing alongside any of the previous techniques that we've gone ahead and discussed and once again that's just because if you do that it goes ahead and kills the user experience and it just means that people won't be willing to come back to your gpt every single day whereas if you don't do that your gpt becomes a superior gpt on the gpt store those people will want to sign up to your gpt and use it on a daily basis and you can make more money that way now let's go ahead and take a look at the exact method for doing this now the easiest way that i've found to do this is to simply use knowledge retrieval so the knowledge retrieval system in the custom gpts allows you to use a json file and you can use a json file like this one over here all it includes is the product name so you go ahead and put the product name in there and then you go ahead and include the product link the affiliated link once you give your custom gpt this particular file it will go ahead and take a look at the file you don't need to include descriptions or anything just this file will be sufficient because the gpt can figure out exactly what these products are given its own knowledge base and then all you need is this specific custom prompt you just want to add this prompt to the end of your custom gpt while you've given it a json file and it will know exactly how to present these products to your customers right over here i'll go ahead and give you an example of the ionic shopping board as you can see i've gone ahead and asked it for a few suggestions for an xbox series x it goes ahead and presents all the suggestions including images and links that i can click to go ahead and buy these products from any sort of store and that's pretty much it so that's exactly how easy affiliate marketing is to set up it's a really really reliable system to set up but a lot of the work simply goes into making your gpt superior to everybody else's having your gpt a constant place that people that want to shop come to and that just means that your gpt is much more likely to get clicks on its affiliate links than anybody else's now thanks a bunch for watching this video hopefully you've learned quite a bit now i'm always available to help out in the discussions group on discord or on patreon so be sure to reach out if there's anything you need further assistance with i will catch you guys in the next one peace out